Hello and welcome to another ASP.NET Core coding tutorial for Around the Code. Now today we're going to have a look at five useful tips for using ASP.NET Core's test server in a next unit test project. Come the end of this video you should have learnt some useful tips for test server such as firing off a post request or adding an authorization header to the request. Now in part one what we did is we basically configured test server in a next unit test project if you haven't seen it, I suggest you check that out. Now for more ASP.NET Core coding tutorials, visit roundthecode.com, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash roundthecode, and follow us on Twitter, it's at roundthecode. Now let's go and have a look at some of the useful tips with Test Server. So the first tip we're going to have a look at is Test Server's DB instance. So one of the problems, we're basically using the in-memory for entity framework so we're basically creating an entity framework instance in memory but the thing is is that by default entity frameworks db context is actually scoped so basically when we fire a request off basically the instance of that db context is basically going to end once that response has been returned so what we need to do is because basically the data is not being stored in an in-memory entity framework we basically, or one resolution around it, is to make it, basically make it a single instance. So all the time the actual test server instance is running, we've got a copy of the actual DB context with all the data that's gone in there. So what the way we can actually sort that out is if we go into our startup class in our test project, and we've got our add DB context there, what we can do is basically pass in an extra parameter and we can call the surface lifetime enum and declare it as a singleton. So that's that done now. So every time, or well basically the instance of the test server will remember all the data that's been added into the actual entity frameworks in memory instance. So that's that done. And now the second tip we want to have a look at is basically uh, how to fire off a post request on test server. It's slightly different from the get request. So what we're going to do with this is we're basically we're going to remove the test that we created in part one and we're going to create a new one. So what we're going to do with this is basically we're going to call the actual create endpoint and we're going to call it using a post method. And then what we're going to do with that is it's basically going to create the actual entity and we're going to then call the read method to check that it's actually been created properly. So we're going to declare it as a fact again and we're going to create a new asynchronous task and we're going to call it test create method. So the way we do this is we pass in a new HTTP request message and we declare the fact that it's a post method that we want to use. And the actual endpoint is a forward slash API forward slash league. So if we go into our around the code API web project, it's basically in here. We've basically got a league controller here and we're overriding the create async, which is basically part of the base controller which is basically here, so it's just creating a new instance in Entity Framework. So if we go back there, so what we need to do first is we basically need to pass in the actual content that we want to send. So basically we need to specify the, the keys and the values that we want to pass in for our league. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the content class in the request instance, I'm going to create a new string content and because it's basically a JSON string we basically need to serialize it, a dictionary, into a JSON string. So we can do that by calling JSON convert .serialize object, and we're going to create a new dictionary with both the key and the value of type string. So if we go into the league entity, which is available in the CRUD API data, we can see one of the things we actually need is the name for it. So we're going to specify that in here. 
So we're going to set the name and we're going to call it My League. That's that done. A couple of things we need to do actually. We need to basically, because we're passing in a JSON string, basically we need to tell the server that that's what we're passing in. So the way we do that is we need to pass the encoding in. We can just set as default. And we need to pass in the media type, which is going to be application forward slash JSON. Okay, so that's that done. Now we need to basically set up our client. And we basically also need to set headers. So it actually passes in the JSON as well. So to do that, we need to create a new instance of client. So yeah, we need to create a client, a new instance of HTTP client off the test server. We need to clear out the default request headers. And we just need to basically add the application JSON into there. So we call it accept, add, and we call it new media type with quality header value, and we'll pass in the application JSON. So if I move that across so you can see. So that's that done. So we're just going to bring that down there so you can see it a bit better. Next, what we need to do is then we need to basically send that response and that will basically send it to our create method, to our create endpoint, which we've already declared up here. So this is basically going to the uh, create method. So to do that, we do file response and we're going to send, send the request up through the HTTP client that we created that comes from our test server. And so just to make sure that's going to work, we're going to, then going to call our read method to check that it actually exists. So to do that, we're going to do await test server .create request. Now, because it's the first record that we've added into our league table or league entity, by default, it's going to have an ID of one. And we're just going to send that using a get method. Now we're just going to do a test to make sure that our when we call our read method, it's actually returning a 200. So it can actually find it successfully. So to do that, we call the HTTP status OK, which we can get from response.status code. That's that done. So we're now going to run the test and make sure that it's going to pass because we obviously want it to pass and we know if it's passed and we know it's working fine. So let's give that a go. So as you can see there, the test has successfully passed. So we've managed to do that fine and that will be good. So just to prove the fact of basically from our first tip of adding it as a singleton, if we were to go ahead now and actually remove that. So if we remove the singleton there. So now we've changed it to a scope. In theory, now this should fail because basically it's creating a new instance of the DB context every time we create a request for the test server. So let's rerun these tests again and I would expect that to fail. So let's go ahead and see if that's actually the case. Yeah, as you can see, it's now failing. And that's because there's basically a separate instance of it. So it's actually forgotten the fact that we've created a league record so it can't actually find the ID of one. So let's go ahead and put that back. Okay so that's tip number two. Tip number three is quite a simple one to be honest. Basically if your API endpoints are you know they require authorization quite often you need to add an authorization header particularly if you're using OAuth security you quite often need to add a bearer token as part of the authorization header. So quite simply, with a GET request, you can just call the add he header, and you've got the header name, which would be authorization, and the value, which would be bearer space your token. With a post, the way we can do it is 
relatively quite simple. What we can do with that is we go into the request up here, call the request that adders headers but add and then again put in your name and your value and then you can go ahead and do that now tip number four is basically we want to use the same instance of test server in all tests so the way tests run in xunit is basically every time a test is run it calls a new instance of unit test one so it will run the constructor basically call the actual test and then it will run dispose. So it doesn't matter if you've got 10 or 20 tests in this particular test class, you're still going to create a new instance every time. So that's all good, but we probably don't want, we may not want separate instances of web builder running at the same time for each individual test. So how can we go about actually only creating one instance of test builder? So the way we can do that is basically we need to first of all stick it in a separate class. So if we move that out the way and we're going to create a separate class and we're going to call it initialization. So we go in there. So we call it initialization. So in here we're going to create an instance of our test server so very similar to how we did it with the uh, test class and we're going to create the constructor and as you can probably guess we're going to create the actual instance of test server in the actual constructor so it's basically going to be using the same as this so we're going to move that into there like so, make sure that the assembly is passed into the class. So that's that done. Now, in order to implement this into our actual unit test, what we can do is we can basically call another interface here so we can inherit another interface. So we call this iClass fixture and we pass in the class that we just created, which is called initialization. So that's that. And finally, what we need to do is because we're not going to be creating an instance in the unit test, we're going to do it in the initialization class. All we can do now is basically call in the actual initial initialization instance as a parameter into the constructor. And basically, it's already created the instance of initialization at this stage. So all we need to do is basically call the test server. And that's that, that's done. So if we actually call the test now and just make sure that they're going to run. So let's do that. And just see if this act is actually going to work for us. So oh, in theory it should do. So yeah, basically we're going to have the same instance of test server every time. It, you might not want to do that though. It might cause some issues, particularly if you're running multiple tests at the same time and you've got separate, you know, you've got um, different bits of data as well going in at different times it might cause some issues but it's up, up to you on that one so the final tip I want to have a look at is how you add a custom app settings JSON file into an X unit project so the way you can do that well first of all we need to create an app settings so we can go in here and what we're going to look for is a JavaScript JSON configuration file So that's going to be created into our test project. So we're just going to set up a key and a value of test and test. So a couple of things we need to do on this if you're running it in a test project. So we've got our properties down here. If we move this across so you can see. We've got build action. We're going to set that to content and copy to output directory. You need to make sure that it's at least copy of newer. Basically, we need to when it basically builds, we need to make sure that the app settings file is there. Otherwise, it's not going to be there and it won't be able to see it. So, in order to add that into our test server, what we can do is if we go in, we need to go into startup. And what we can do, no, we don't. We need to go into initialization because that is where we're building the actual test server. Now, inside um web builder we've basically got the startup in there we also need to specify the configuration file 
So the way we can do that is we go in here and we call the use configura configuration. We create a new configuration builder. And we add the JSON file, which is appsettings.json. And finally, we need to call the build, like so. So to test that this is going to run, what we're going to do now is we're basically going to go into our startup class and we're going to just add a breakpoint around here. So basically, once it gets to that breakpoint, we can actually go ahead and test it to make sure it's actually working. And I'll show you how to do that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run our tests in debug mode or one of them. We're going to run this one in debug mode. OK, so you can see here that it's basically, you know, it's basically running the actual or trying to configure the actual web host at the moment. So what we can do is just to make sure that the app settings is coming through is we can run this command here in our watch window. We call configuration.getValue and it's a type of string and the key of it is test. As you can see there, basically the configuration, it's being read from the app settings. So you can see the key of test and the value of it is also test. So we can manage to successfully add an app settings file into our actual XUnit project. So that gives you some tips on how to use ASP.NET Core's test server in an XUnit test project. Now I'm interested to know how you basically use test server and how you get the best out of it. Please go to roundthecode.com and get in contact with me. Just click on the contact link at the top of the page. Now thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.